Minister brought up um, the perception of the internal disparity again today and uh, talked about how some groups stand to make more money than others and he kind of criticized that approach. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, look, we represent uh, just under 1,100 members, and, and, and there's a very, very mixed bag of circumstances for the various groups that are out there. Um, our job is to try to come up with a plan that satisfies everybody to, uh, you know, as best as we possibly can. Uh, but as you can imagine, with a diverse group like we have, very strong, opinionated people, um, uh, everybody having very, very significant challenges in what they do every Every day, um, you know, we have to find that balance. And what that means is that some people um, have to make concessions, and uh, you know, perhaps more concessions than others. But at the same time, you have to look at negotiations over a long period of time. Uh, you know, last negotiation, some people did a little bit better than others. The previous negotiation, it was the same thing, and it'll be the same thing again. But at the end of the day, uh, we can't satisfy a hundred percent, eleven hundred people. Uh, so we try to do the best we can. We've had extensive consultations with our membership and I have to tell you that um, despite the kind of naysaying that you hear coming from certain you know, corners of the government, whenever that happens, uh, the number of supportive emails that I get increases geometrically. So, you know, I feel very, very confident uh, about our membership and how they feel about it. Uh, we try to come up with reasonable approaches for everybody. The process through which we determined uh, what we asked for different groups was determined through extensive consultation with every group. Uh, so that's, you know, that's where we are today. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, by any measurement, uh, an 80% ratification process um, is as robust as anybody could ask for. Uh, and the reason you have majority rule is because you know that you'll never get 100% 100, 100 of support on anything that you try to do for 1,100 people. So, you know, uh, it's really unfortunate that these kinds of tactics are being used. I don't think it's helping uh, the effort to reach a solution and to stabilize our health care system. And that's our agenda. Our agenda is strictly to look at the medical care system and to alert the public and to alert the government on what the risks are in the future and to prepare for those risks. It's not unlike the situation with the, with the, the oil leak in the Gulf, you know. You have to be prepared for contingencies. You have to look ahead and understand what the challenges are going to be in the future. So, you know, we know that we have an aging population. And by the way, the population of physicians is aging at the same time. So we have, for example, over 100 physicians who are over the age of 65 in those numbers that you saw in the ad in the paper today. 100 or more of those people are over 65 years old. A couple of hundred of them are over 55 years old. So those people aren't going to be there forever. We have to deal with all of that. We've got chronic disease on the rise because of an aging population. We need to prepare for those things. Um, and we're not prepared. We have shortages. You know, uh, the minister can say we have, I don't know what number was in the ad, um, and it's true. Uh, in terms of a head count, we do have somewhere in the area of, of 1,080 physicians. That's as of March, uh, March 2009. We don't have the 2010 statistics yet. But, but the fact of the matter is that 10, uh, you know, uh, 1,080 uh, is really uh, about 80% of that because not everybody is doing just clinical work. Some of them are teaching, some of them are doing research. I'll give you another example. Uh, the rheumatologist spoke about a week or so ago. There are four of them in the province, but they only represent two and a half clinical positions because the other uh, one and a half uh, value of time is, is dedicated to research and teaching and a whole bunch of other things. So, you know, you have to look at how much of a particular physician is actually dedicated to clinical service. And, uh, and so we have shortfalls. We have shortfalls today. And, you know, to deny or to pretend or to portray to the public that things are fantastic over here and we're doing a great job is, is, is simply not to be telling the truth. The Minister also uh, brought up the information sessions that the, the association has been having 
and uh, called them misinformation sessions. And mm -hmm. one of the examples he gave was um, when the uh, psychiatrists came in and he said, you know, we've hired 20, uh, 23 psychiatrists since 2003, you know, what more do you want? Uh, you know, how did, what do you think about him calling the information ses sessions misinformation sessions? Again, I, I, I find it you know, very unfortunate that he, he would be making public statements like that. It's behavior unbecoming of a minister, in my opinion. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the physicians who are sitting here uh, every week talking about the challenges that they face work very, very hard for the community of, of Newfoundland and Labrador, and they deserve better than that kind of response. Uh, they're reaching out to the public, trying to educate and inform the public about what they do, and to sort of be dismissed like that, uh, to me, is disrespectful and they deserve better than that. They're also going to be launching a, their own information campaign. Uh, they said they're going to start with newspapers. They may, you know, extend that to television and radio. Uh, what do you think of... of I think that? that's excellent. I think they should be presenting their perspective on it and, uh, and we'll present our perspective on it and the public will decide what's accurate and what's not accurate. Uh, you know, frankly, uh, there's a lot of mythology that's being spread around uh, in some of the ads, and we will be we we will we will be providing a a a greater context on the information that's coming from the government. Are you able to give us an assessment of the uh, two positions on the negotiations? Are you far apart? Are you within striking distance? I'm not going to comment on that at this point. Uh, I, I I think it's it's it would be premature. Uh, and preemptive, you know, uh, I think we need to have that conversation with the Minister of Finance. Speaking about, uh, you know, uh, trying to educate the public, you have these ads in the paper, and uh, you portray people who are ill. Um, I'm just wondering whether these, the people we see are real people or whether they are actors. And if they are actors, is that not misleading? Um, I think I think they they represent accurate facts. Um, I I don't know who I don't know who they are personally, um, uh, but I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is the information that's on those ads. The information basically talks about a particular condition or sets of conditions and the wait times associated with those conditions. Those are factual. All of that has, is 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 uh, verifiable. It's all footnoted, and, uh, and and we stand behind all of the information and all of the ads. There is no, I suppose when you see you know somebody portrayed as as uh, as ill, there's mm -hmm. a certain emotional response to that, and I think people would expect the emotion to have a genuine. Uh, to be genuinely inspired by a genuine person. Yeah, look, I, I don't want to get into a sort of a moral debate on it, but I think you also have to take into account that a person who's particularly ill, uh, particularly perhaps with a mental illness, uh, may not be all that excited about putting their face, uh, you know, to an ad like that, but that's, the story still needs to be told. So sometimes you have to use, um, you know, uh, proxies to get a message across.